These here I purchased from a place called Adafruit, adafruit.com. Um, little chick owns the place, man, and um, they sell pretty cool products. A lot of uh, Androino stuff and buttons and switches and everything. This is a waterproof uh, switch. I don't know if it's I-85, I-86, I-87, I-68, or what it is, if, if I even got that code right. It's got a little O-ring that comes in behind uh, here, but this is a five pin on off switch. Now, some of these will be momentary, meaning that when you hold it down, it's on, and then when you release it, it's off. And that's not the kind you want if you want to turn a light on or off. This is actually an on off switch, but it's an on off five pin switch, which can make things a little bit confusing. Okay? So the cool thing about this is it's got a little LED ring here and that creates even more of an issue when you want to go to wire this up number one if you're using 12 volts okay this is only rated from three to six volts and so because of that you have to put in a resistor to drop the voltage uh, in the application on the uh, website it said 470 470 ohm and that's what these guys look like don't tell me how to calculate these I don't know I'm not that savvy in this stuff I just know enough to get in trouble and make things catch on fire um, but this is what they sent me for I think 99 cents I think there was like 12 or 13 or something so I'm gonna go across how to hook this up to 12 volt how to make the ring light work uh, all the time when it's on when it's off and how to install this resistor so you can drop the voltage to the proper uh, voltage amount so the first thing you want to do is figure out what all these pins do and it's pretty simple you can see the marks here because you can't see them on here on the back of this there's a positive let me get that the same there's a positive a negative a negative is over here okay and then you're going to have three right here on the bottom. One is a common. I'll explain all this here in a minute. And then one is a normally open and one is a normally closed. So when you hook this thing up, the first thing you would think is that I need to hook my positive and negative up to my battery source. And that's not the case. Okay. Ground is a ground is a ground. So you hook your ground up. Okay. And then your common, this is where your power is going to come in, whether it be three volt or six volt five volt 12 volt whichever it is this is where it's going to come in okay because this is going to be what you power on and off whatever you're trying to power with the switch whatever you're trying to turn on and off with the switch okay so this is your negative and this is actually your positive okay this positive over here is for that led and that's one of the things that threw me so i'm working with 12 volts and not not six or, or three so the LED in here and yours may not be the same you can order these with 12 volt I just didn't for some reason uh, but this is good for three volt all the way to to six volt okay but the problem is is I'm gonna be using a 12 volt power supply on my motorcycle so what we have to do so we don't burn the LED up because the switch will handle it. The switch can handle a lot more voltage than 12. But so we don't burn the LED up, we're going to have to install one of these resistors. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. This is one that I've already pre-wired up. Um, almost have it ready to go and install. Now, I'm going to tell you right away, there are sockets that you can get to plug these into, which makes life a lot easier. Uh, but I didn't know about it until I had already got started. So, just to recap uh, here, this is the ground. Can you see that there? This is the ground, okay? And this is the common. So this is going to go the positive on the battery, okay? And then this here is the positive for the LED. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... I want you to see we've got power here blinking light okay and 
There's my negative. And this is the common. Okay. So, right now, the switch is actually putting power through. Uh, I'm going to get 12 volts. Make sure you can see this here. Okay. So, ground is a ground is a ground. I'm going to put that ground there. Okay. So, Turn the switch on. Okay. There's my 13. Then when I push the button again, it goes off. Now if I move this over to the other little pin there, you see it's got voltage. So you're getting voltage either way, but it just depends on whether you want it to come on when it's pushed or when it's not pushed. So normally closed is what you want a circuit to be. Okay. So, normally closed means when it's not depressed, it means it's always, you know, it's on, and when you, when you push it, it turns it off. That's kind of backwards the way we normally do things. So, I'm going to use this middle pin here, which is normally open, and when I push the button, I get voltage. That's the way I'm going to hook it up on my bike. Okay, so... The resistor, how does that work? So the resistor you just need to put in line for the positive that's going to power the LED. So right here is where I've soldered that resistor. Okay, and I think the symbol is something like that there. Okay. Trying to find my showy to show and tell there. So that goes right there. And then you can solder another little wire on there to make it a little easier to work with. And let's say if you're going to run it normally open, or I'm sorry, yeah, norm, uh, normally closed, when you push the button, you want it to come on. You want to run this resistor from here into here. Now, if you take and put, and this is what threw me when I was uh, playing around with this stuff. So if you figure it's a resistor, it should resist and it should resist all the time. That's not the case. Grab my positive lead here. So, There's my 13 with my power supply. Now, if I go up here with the resistor, what do you think is going to happen? Still 13.86. So the only time this thing's going to work is when there's a load on it. I did not understand that. So when you're powering the LED or whatever the case may be, then it will do its job the way it's supposed to. And cut some of the power out for you. I'm going to attempt to show you how that works here. Okay, so now we've got this hooked back up. Negative going to negative. Positive going to common. Okay. And let me turn the switch on. And there's my 13.86 volts or 12 volts. Okay. So now I'm going to take this over here, and I'm going to touch it on that. See how the light comes on? Or can you with my hand in the way? Okay. So right down here, I'm going to get behind that resistor and see how it comes out to 6.8. So it's got to have a load on it to make it work. Don't ask me how. That's the way you need to wire it up, though. So a simple recap, that's your negative, this is the power from the battery, your resistor goes here, 
this is going to supply power to whatever you want to turn on. Let's say it's a, a, a light, okay? And so your light's here. It's got a positive and a negative, or a positive and a ground, and ground is a ground is a ground. So that can go back to the chassis. And that's the way that dead gum thing works. So I hope that wasn't too damn confusing. I hope it may have helped you out a little bit because uh, it got me scratching my head. Now, a couple other things I'm going to show you too. I almost got killed here on a motorcycle uh, two or three times in a row by rearing collisions. And uh, I'm going to make uh, the back of my motorcycle bust into flames basically when I pull my brake lever. Um, you may have ran into or seen the uh, deal when you apply the brake, it'll flash the light rapidly uh, three or four times or strobe or whatever. And those modules are 40 bucks. You can buy this one from um, Super Bright LED for, I think it's less than 10. And I've got one on my bike and it works fantastic. I'm also installing here in just a little while, as soon as I can get through doing this, I'm going to install this on the back of my bike. It's going to be hooked to my brakes. And this is one of, or two of six that I'll be putting in it. So every time I apply my brakes, get that turned over again. And those things are super, super bright if you're looking straight at them. And I also converted over my rear tail light to LED, and this is another product that comes from super bright LEDs. Um, I bought a lot of different LEDs. I don't know, I don't get anything out of this, man. It's just a, a good product, man, uh, for a little bit of money. Uh, it's encapsulated. Uh, so it protects the uh, corn cob, I think is what they call this thing. But let me show you how bright this thing here is. If I can do it without blowing it up. And those things are just super, super bright. I think you can get this here all less than 10 bucks put it on your motorcycle and uh, one thing I've noticed when I was riding here the last couple of days if I'm on the freeway and somebody's coming up behind me pretty quick I can tap my front brake and that rapid flashing uh, makes them stand down makes them back up or slow down you know and approach with a little bit more caution um, anyway I hope some of this stuff helps you out I'm, I know it was a booger for me um, if you got any questions send me a message I'll do my best to help you out because uh, I'm going to continue to play around with this stuff and learn electronics a little bit more and more every day.